Hello guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. It's gonna be different to the videos I usually post here on the channel. As a professional speed skater, it's mostly what I talk about. However, in this one video, I decided to talk about what I do when I'm not skating during my two to three weeks of off season that I have every year at the end of the season, usually after World Champs or after the Olympic Games. This year was very special because I went to climb the Kilimanjaro with my dad, Rene Halthorp a heart transplant patient and I, Victor Althorpe, have no experience at all with hiking. found this company tour compass that helped us arrange the entire journey they fixed everything basically from the second we stepped onto the first flight leaving Copenhagen and then till we were back in Denmark 12 days later I'm gonna take you through this entire journey it was pretty wild and even though that might not be the reason you subscribe to this channel in the first place if you are looking to just do something fun try and explore things or just see something different than skating from my point of view you might enjoy this video we set out for a 12 day trip, which was a little complicated fitting it all in because I had to do during my season break. We also had to get some vaccines and my dad also had to take time off from work. However, Tour Compass helped us arrange everything. So it did work out with our dates and our needs for this trip. Um, so we went there at the end of March, uh, just before the rain season starts in April in Tanzania. Uh, we arrived there, it was, quite different to uh, what I expected. It was very desert. I thought it'd be more of developed villages. So that was pretty cool seeing, you know, the stuff I'd seen on movies or in the movies. And, and that was pretty wild. Small airport, we got picked up. It was all very, very nice. We had no moments of having to wait or, or anything. And there's no, no time during the entire journey where we didn't feel like, oh, there's being taken care of us. So we always knew where to go and we always had somebody to guide us in the right direction made it to a really nice hotel all the people were super kind and the evening when we got there we were basically briefed on how it works climbing Kilimanjaro you get up to almost 6,000 meters of altitude which even though I train in Salt Lake City for a big part of the year is pretty high and the same goes my dad so I think they always recommend us to try and take your time as you climb the mountain simply because you want to adapt for that you want to acclimate for the altitude Otherwise, you're going to experience altitude sickness and then, well, you're not worth much. So we got that briefing and then the day after when the trip starts, we got a big breakfast. We had we had actually a day and a half there where we just chilled, enjoyed it. Um, there's no jet lag because it's sort of the same time or it is the same time. So in it's Denmark, so we just flew straight down and then we just had some good food. We laid in the pool and and basically got ready. They had all the gear that we needed to climb the mountain at the hotel as well, which was very convenient that we just had everything there. We met up with the guy, we met up with the assistants so we could feel more comfortable climbing the mountain with them. And they explained it quite well and they really made sure that we didn't rush anything. They also explained that that is gonna be quite the effort. Like I said, I've never gone on a hike before and my dad had a heart transplantation five years prior to this trip. So that was some of the hurdles, but it's also a way that to show you guys that if you have the right team there, um, if you plan it well, then you can get pretty far, even given those circumstances and the conditions. So the next day we drove to the Machame Gate, which is the bottom of the, of the Kilimanjaro where most hikes will start. In the season, there is literally thousands of people climbing this. However, because this was just in the edge of the, the rain season, there was basically no people, which in a way was pretty cool. It was more like a private mountain. However, the weather was also more towards the rain season. So we got to that Machame gate. We, uh, we got some water there. And then the thing is you really only just carry your, they call them day bags. So what you need for that day, they have people that are very strong and very trained to climb these mountains that carry your tent, they carry your food. Um, so they all organized this. This was all taken care of by Tour Compass, which was really the only people we had contact to in, in order to plan this whole trip. So that was super nice that they had just figured all that out. And obviously these were people like our guide had more than 20 years of experience. So we were in good hands for sure. 
the climb, um, thus increase in, in effort and in difficulty. So the first day, it's also a cool thing you get through all these different climates. You start out, it looks more, sort of not far from Denmark, there's a lot of forest, uh, it's pretty humid. And then the further up you get, the, um, the drier it gets, the colder it gets, of course. And um, by the end of it, it got really cold. So that was one thing that really had to prepare for. I like the idea of just carrying all my own stuff. So I just brought one backpack where I had all my clothes. My dad gave it to the, these people that were helping us, the porters they're called. And then day by day, it was just incredibly smooth. Like we got to the base and they had already prepared the tent. We would have incredibly delicious food. I'm a dietitian and I still don't really figure out how on earth they managed to make that so well up there with those conditions. Uh, and honestly, very nutritious meals. Um, you could just tell they knew what they were doing. They gave us oatmeal and stuff and, and different soups just to keep us hydrated because you forget to drink and it's high, it's the altitude, it's the heat. Um, but they had all that implemented in the meals so that helped out a lot. Uh, pretty comfortable actually sleeping up there. My dad obviously went at a different pace than me. Um, we did go together for some of the time but then I started getting a little cold so I went ahead to not just stand and wait and then went back down and met up with my dad again and we, uh, we basically made it like that to the first two camps, then the third camp, it starts to be actual climbing. It's a little scared at some points. Um, it is mostly uphill, of course you're climbing a mountain, but there's sections of going down as well that are more technical in some ways. And we had a ton of rain, um, which was definitely my big weakness. And to be honest, three days in, we or three, four days in, we did realize that we're not gonna make it to the top because um, my dad wouldn't be able to make it. The days took twice as long as planned for him. Um, simply because he ran out of breath. He uh, is not trained for this. So we just tried to get the most out of it up until that point. And then as we got higher up, this is the last base camp that was really his goal to make it there. I went ahead, planning on going to the top. However, as I went there, it got really warm. I got really warm because, you know, I'm an athlete. I like to do things fast. I like to, to get a workout out of it. So I climbed a little too fast. I got overheated or didn't get overheated, just got sweaty. And then when I got there, there was no tents, there's no people and it got really cold. They even started hailing a bit and I could feel like it's shaking from the inside and got to some degree hypothermia. So the porters had to help me down from there. Did meet up with my dad though. And, uh, and then we just got back to the camp down there. It really didn't take long to get down from the mountain, even though we made it up to 5,000 meters of altitude. As you can see, the views are crazy and these changes of climate is something I've never experienced um, basically anywhere in the world. We're talking minute to minute, it could be sunshine, hail, snow, pretty incredible. So we got back down and we were picked up by a Jeep and then they drove us back to the hotel there and, um, and that was actually the end of the climbing part. Then a super cool thing that if you ever happen to go there or anywhere else for such an extreme, you know, um, journey or experience i would recommend something to outweigh a contrast at the end of it which we did we went to sansi bar at a crazy nice resort it was all organized by tour compass and we got there straight from from um from the kilimanjaro airport and wow that was that was nice it was the most luxurious uh, vacation i've ever been on even though it's probably also the cheapest vacation i've ever been on so that is definitely something i can recommend again we did it just before the rain season so it was quite quiet at the hotel which we really enjoyed and for me that was the last four days before I had to start training again to just recharge the batteries we had drinks by the water we did morning yoga walks in the sand yeah um, my dad got a nice massage they were just super super comfortable and uh, I could definitely recommend going there even though to be honest I was pretty skeptical about, skeptical about this trip I had a long season and I needed rest. So uh, my first thought was like, why not just rest back home in Denmark? But this ended up giving me more energy than it took. So yeah, that's a big thumb up for that. Um, I hope this video did, that it was interesting to you guys. It's different than what I usually do. It's a little more vlog style. And normally I just share workouts and how I live as an athlete. But if this was interesting, leave a comment below. And then, uh, you know, I'm already pretty bad into heavy training, been training my, my butt off for some months here and I season is coming closer. So I hope you want to stay tuned for that. Cause that's going to be pretty interesting as well. I'll do my best to skate fast and, um, and make some more cool videos and I'll see you for the next one. Subscribe and like, and all that thing. And, um, 
That's it for me.